go to the middle and turn to the left, you'll come to Psalms. Uh, in Psalm 119. We're going to start preaching through this whole psalm uh, on Thursday nights, and we're going to get through it, amen, finish through it. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but so the Psalm 119 is a wonderful, wonderful passage of Scripture. It's all about the Word of God, and I, I tell you this, uh, we need the Word of God, and uh, you know, tonight I, I kind of uh, had, you know, took some further time of the service, and Brother Frank said, they said, are you going to read the Scripture? I said, well, we got to read the Scripture tonight for sure, because I'm preaching on the Scripture. Uh, and, and so it's real important. Let's go ahead and read. We're, we're, we're going to read the first eight verses, and we're going to get out of here right on time tonight. I want to make sure I keep that right, but but I don't want to I don't want to get away from what God's going to do. So I don't know how He's going to do it, uh, but I know that there's a lot to unpack here. But it, it's wonderful. I mean, uh, uh, today I was reading Psalm 119, uh, Psalm 116 to Psalm 120 in my Bible reading, and man, I got into 119. And you know, oftentimes when you're reading through your Bible. Or I shouldn't say you. At times in my life when I was reading through my Bible, I would know Psalm 119 was coming. And I would think, man, it's going to take me a little longer today to get through it. Because it's the longest chapter in the Bible. Uh, but, you know, when I started reading it today, man, just God got all over me. And I said, you know, Lord, I, I, I love your word. And, and I, I feel uh, as today when I was reading it, I felt like the psalmist who wrote it, and boy, we're going to look at that this this next few months, whatever it's going to take on Thursday nights. Uh, I will not be going for a Thursday night for some time, and I really am looking forward to doing this. And uh, and so verse number one says, "Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep His testimonies." And that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Let's pray. We'll have a song and preach to you for about 30 minutes. Father, we love you. And Lord, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for revealing yourself to me once again today in my Bible reading. Lord, and I like it. I like the word. And sometimes I get away from it, God, and sometimes I... I do it because it's a duty, and then sometimes I don't do it. And, Lord, I don't want to be like that. I want to be holy, devoted to you like Caleb was. I want to be totally sold out to you and, and to your word and be like Jeremiah where it burned within my bones. And, God, I want you to know that I need you and we need you as a church. And, Lord, this is a Bible-believing church. And so without your word, nothing here would have ever transpired. But, Lord, we're not finished. You're not finished. You've just begun. It's early in our lives, in our Christian walks. And, and God, the only thing that will take us to the next level will be your word. And so, Lord, help us not to grow apathetic to it or lethargic to the wonderful wonderful power that it has by not reading and meditating upon it like you would have us to do thank you for this psalm thank you for what you're going to do here tonight bless the preaching and teaching of your word we love you in jesus name amen you can be seated thank you for standing Where streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, for I found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. 
blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out on, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all that it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say. Blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name. I couldn't imagine going to a, a church, a so-called church, that didn't get a little bit excited about music and and man, I've been in them. I'm, I've been in them. I'm looking around, thinking, "Man, that's good." And, uh, and 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 folks just sit there, and, and 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 some of you just sit there like this. And and but maybe inside something's really happening. I couldn't imagine thinking about the name of the Lord, and not something happening. I mean, it's just. I'm glad I have a real relationship. I'm not saying you don't have a real relationship, but man, I, I, that's the only thing I can think of that would make it so real to me. Is that man? I know he's real, yeah. uh, and and he meets with me, and he he meets with me even when I don't meet with him. Amen. He comes for me when I when I when I leave him at home. He still comes, and what a God! Uh, and it's not something that uh, <laughs> I mean I ain't got to be convinced that he's God and he's doing something. He's doing something for sure. Psalm 119. I'm I, I'm telling you, it, it is a wonderful psalm. We're gonna we're gonna go through this uh, quite systematically. That would be the word, uh, uh, and it may not be the word, but we're going to. And, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about just the, just, you know, I, I copied word for word from, uh, from, uh, from uh, oh, man, what's his name? Uh, anyways, from a commentary, some things he wrote down about uh, just the history. And I thought about rephrasing it all so it sounded like me. And I thought, well, why would I dumb down something that's so literally, li literary, literarily uh, correctly who knows what I'm saying written correct correctly literarily uh, literarily probably not a word but Karen here so no, everybody will pull over me uh, correct I mean it's wonderful and, and so I am going to dice through it a little bit but we don't know who wrote this psalm uh, many people speculate some people think that David wrote it some people think that Hezekiah wrote it some people think that Jeremiah wrote it Ezra Nehemiah Malachi and Daniel, 
And so, but they, they don't know who wrote it, but there's evidence that the, the author of it uh, was someone who suffered as a saint. He, was, he knew the Lord, and he went through some things and was going through some things. And, and really, it's, it, a lot of it had just been treat, mistreated. Uh, and his enemies were the Jews. A lot of the Jews were in a position of power, and they were able to harm him. And, and so he's writing this, and, and he was in physical danger. And, and he was faced in his day with a, with a laxity. And what I mean is a lackadaisical attitude with the Jews, with people that were in power, people that really weren't, weren't after God. Uh, really weren't, weren't looking to please God, and they were uh, falling away from God often in the ranks. And, and he had, he, he, but he resisted temptation. He was successful. I like to think about Jeremiah. You, know, you read through Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't convert, no, when I won conversion in 40 years. Uh, and, and, man, he just kept on preaching, throwing in jail, everything. But he says his word, the word burned in his bones. And, and, and he, uh, so I don't know if Jeremiah wrote it, but I know he didn't quit. And we know David didn't quit. We know Nehemiah didn't quit. Ezra and, and Daniel. And, and while everything was going around, these people stayed in love with the Lord. And he stayed in love with his word. And some people thought he might be young. Some people thought he might be old. Uh, you know, the, the, there's one man who presents a strong case for Hezekiah. But then there's another one that presents a case that it might be Daniel because they think that it was written, and, and, and some of us are going to have to understand what we're saying here, post-exile, which would mean this. You know, the Jews went into captivity for 70 years in Babylon. And before that, they talked a lot about the sanctuary. They talked a lot about the law and things they had to do, the, the systematic religious things that they had to do. We see no effect. We see none of that written in, written in here. And so one guy thinks there was probably Daniel because it doesn't emphasize the, the law as much. And we see law in here a lot, but it's talking about the law of the Lord, the word of God. And it rather emphasizes the inward heart for the Lord, the spiritualness of faith. The, it points to uh, wanting to be close to the Lord. And so that's why a lot of people think it was written then. And before that, they, the Hebrew religion was centered on sanctuary and sacrifices. The Psalms arranged with a central theme of God's holy word. That's what the whole Psalm is written about. He didn't see God's word as some harsh command. Uh, he saw God's word as a source of joy and rejoicing. He didn't look at it like, man, I got to read it. He didn't look at it like it has to be done. He, he didn't look at it like, I better do this or God's going to get me. No, he looked at it with a look of love and emphasis on, on, on the Lord, not the legalism, mosaic stuff that was going on in, in those times. It's a poet that writes something that, 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 that is elevated by love and desire. Now, I'm getting somewhere with this, and I want you to think about these things tonight. The, uh, it, it has here, the edict was replaced by emotion. An edict is a command or an official order from someone that's in authority. And, man, it, it wasn't just a law in the, the, the psalmist's mind. It was, it was something he got to do that he was in love with doing, thinking about the Lord. It was built upon love, built upon the Word of God, not chains, nothing like that. The consist of 22 stanzas. If you read it, there's eight stanzas in each, each of the 22. And uh, you see the letter there. It's the letter, first letter, it's the letter of the Hebrew alphabet, 22 letters. The first letter, the second letter, the third letter, the fourth letter. And, and they say that each, each, each verse would start off with that letter. Of course, it doesn't in the English language. But that's what it is, 22 of them. And it seems that... They did that so they would help people to memorize it. Now, I just want to give you some stuff here real quick. It's referred, 
the, the, the theme of the psalm is the law, which is referred to 173 times out of 176 verses. God's mentioned in every verse. The psalm contains 70 prayer requests. The psalmist refers to himself 325 times and mentions his suffering in 66 verses. But he is resolved to know, keep, and love God's word. So he's going through stuff. I mean, 66 verses, he's being, he talks about uh, suffering. You know, a lot of people, well, you know, we don't know, we understand what I'm going through. Well, I understand who God is, and he goes through everything with you. The Solomon, psalmist uses eight synonyms for, synonyms for the word of God, and so, and, and some of them believe there's a list of nine. Some believe ten. Uh, he uses the word law or instruction. He uses the word that word 24 times. He uses the word testimonies 19 times. Precepts 20 times. Statutes 19 times. Commandments 22 times. Judgments, decisions, appointments 22 times. He uses the word 22 times. Promise or sayings 20 times. You know, someone said uh, it's a, the alphabet of divine love. And so there's a reason for all of this, what I'm saying. God, God knew what he was doing when he wrote this. And every word of this psalm points to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just telling you, it's unbelievable what God points us to. Hey, listen, if you ever come to this church and you're not pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a problem with you or with me. One or the other. I, I'm just telling you because we want to lift this up. And that's what the psalm does. The psalm let, makes, a, makes the word of God fresh in our lives. And, and many verses uh, illuminate the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we read it this next couple of weeks or few weeks or months or years, whatever it takes, I want you to think about it. I want to encourage you to read it. So it's the longest one. Man, it's the best one. This, this is the best chapter in the Bible. And, and man, it just got real fresh today, and I like it. And, and listen, I wouldn't need to study anything to go through this whole chapter because it's so wonderful how it speaks to me individually. But I want to give you a little outline tonight, but listen, I'm afraid to even give an outline because I don't want to take away from the Lord. I don't want you to think, you know, we can put all these words together, man. But God needs to be lifted up here tonight, and God wants to help you. So for just about 20 minutes... I want you to look at it with me tonight. The Bible says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, everything I just told you, he did it because he loved God. Wasn't trying to write out a bunch of laws for people to take and listen to. Wasn't writing out the Ten Commandments or the 300, 400 commandments that are in the Bible. He was saying, blessed are they. That word blessed in the Old Testament means happy. Literally. People that are happy. They're, they're happy people. The Bible will make you a happy man or a happy woman. It's the word of God. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. The word way there, listen, what is he talking about there? He's talking about the Lord's way. Blessed means happy. Happy because the word of God rules his life. Let's see, so I'm not happy just because the word of God doesn't rule your life. He says, blessed are they. I mean, that's almost a promise in the word of God. Listen, blessed are the undefiled who, in the, or blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. You want to be a happy person? Man, I do. I like being happy. My family likes me to be happy. Our church likes me to be happy. God desires for me to be happy. Now, I'm not talking about happy because everything's going right on the outside. I'm talking about happy because of the word of God. And he says that you want to be a happy man, it'll be, it'll be through the word of God. Well, happy how? In his way. Blessed are the un filed in the way the word occurs 13 times in the in the psalms and, and listen i believe it's one of god's synonyms for the word of god 
right there, the way. Uh, we, we preached a couple years ago the baby dedication, train up a child in the way he should go. And, and I believe when I studied it out that God was saying in the way. Train up a child in the way, in the Lord, in the book, in his precepts, in what he does, and he will make it. He will come back. He will return if they really get trained in the way. Training is not just giving information, folks. Training is making sure they receive the information. So I can't make anybody receive the information. Sure you can. You just got to figure out. You got to pray. You got to make sure you're praying and asking God to help. The word suggests that a course of conduct marked out by God's word, a road that is trod or a way of life, a course of action by God. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Listen, listen, you want to be a happy person. It only will be in his way. Most miserable person on the face of the earth. Now listen, you know, you've heard me say this for years and years. It ain't unsaved people. It's saved people who will not let God have his way. And his way is, is here. There's no other way. I mean, we've all heard it. Man, I, well, you know, I believe God just doesn't care. God's, God's okay with the way I live. No, he is not. God is not okay with a bad attitude because God speaks against the bad attitude. God ain't okay with anything that this word speaks against. And he says, look, if you'll let the word rule your life, he'll rule your life in the way. We have two choices, the broad way that leadeth to destruction. Listen to me now. You can take that broad way, but it will lead to destruction. Listen. People without the Lord are destroying themselves every day. I, 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 probably, I, I try to teach my kids so much. <laughs> Guys, I mean, me and Dale were watching basketball last night, and those, those commercials kept coming on with the drinks and stuff. And I said, huh, buddy, let me tell you something. That commercial does not show the little girl that gets drunk and can't know where she is and be uh, mistreated by men and dumped into and, and, and taken advantage of. It doesn't show the man and the woman throwing their guts up and doesn't show the kids that are left at home because daddy is out drinking all night. It doesn't show the kids that got no mama because mama's drinking and partying. It doesn't show, it shows all the happiness. I mean, you know. And you start watching these commercials now, they're very culturally, there's a, there's a, I hate to even talk about alcohol, but uh, there's a, 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 a Puerto Rican rum commercial out that is like, just got all this hip hop and all these people that look like our folks in this neighborhood just having a great time. Now that never does that. It wrecks everything. Hey, I'm trying to teach my kids it's in the way. This ain't something that, that we have to do. It's something we get to do. And listen, if we're going to be happy, it'll be in God's way. And that's what the psalmist was saying. He said, listen, I know that it, no matter what was going on, he talked 66 times about suffering. He talks 325 times about himself. And he's going through it, and the world's against him, and things are happening. But he's like, man, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. And he gives it to us, and we get it two, three thousand, three thousand years later. Broad is the way of disobedience. Young people, listen to me. You can think that pastor is mean, and you can think that I wish he'd stop telling me what to do, but you better hope that I don't ever get up here and give up on you. You better hope that I don't ever stop, that mama don't ever stop, because when mama stops and the pastor stops, the kids are gone. And there won't be no happiness. It ain't going to work. Blessed are they undefiled in the way. The ones that didn't get filled up with that junk and the ones that got messed up in that junk but came out of it. My mind's so messed up and there's so many things I've done in my life that, man, I think, what in the world? But it ain't like that no more. And I want to live in that book. I want to live what God wants me to live. That book's not a boring book to me. That book ain't a bunch of laws to me. That book set me free. That book still sets me free. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life. So that, you know, Brother Burton, no, I, I, I do. Yeah, I do know, and I'm telling you every time. 
them funky attitudes, all that stuff. We'll see. Meet me in 15 years if you keep that attitude in. And tell me how disgusted your life is, how messed up it is, and how it didn't work, and how it was over. Because everybody that ever left this place, that ever, that ever left this place and did not walk with God, ruined it all. Everybody. I can name them out. We know a lot of them. They ain't happy. And there's no happiness, and there's no happiness without the Lord. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Psalmist says, blessed is the man who chooses the way of the undefiled. Think about Daniel. Daniel chose not to defile himself with the king's meat. Think about Jesus, man. He was holy. Listen, here's what's interesting about that word blessed. In the Old Testament, that word blessed, in the Old Testament, it's unbelievable. It's plural. What does that mean? It's, it's that old, uh, it, it's not just happy, it's multiple happies. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> it ain't happy, it's happy, happy. It's the, what's the guy? Uh, dying is the guy, happy, happy. I mean, that's exactly what God is saying there. It ain't, it ain't, I mean, you're just having a good time every now and then. It ain't the world's happiness that lasts, listen, the world's happiness just lasts for a moment. Just lasts for a moment. Then you better ask your uncles and aunts, are you really happy? Because they would have to answer if they're going to be honest with you. Nope. Doesn't matter what they say. The 16-year-old getting high might be happy. He ain't gone long enough in life to figure it out. He might think he's happy, but listen, it's coming. You know, happy, happy means all oh, the happiness, the overflow of joy. That's what happiness is. It's the overflow of joy. Joy is the joy is only something you get. It's a fruit of the spirit. Think about it now. The fruit of the spirit. When you get saved, you get fruit. Stuff grows inside of you. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Joy is one of them. And the happiness that he's talking about here is only happiness that someone who has joy can have. Not someone that doesn't have joy, because joy is not in the person that's not saved. Their happiness is temporary. It's based on what happens. It's not based on the joy of the Lord. And, and so, thank God this psalmist, man, he just was in love with the Lord. That's why the unsaved person can never really know unhappiness or no happiness. The devil has a counterfeit. He sure does. He has a counterfeit based on pleasure, based on shallowness. Now, you don't know what I'm talking about. Listen to me. It's based on, on just pleasure. I mean, I, I, I do have fun. I, 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 you know, I like, I like to go watch these guys play football. I love football. I love sitting on the sidelines and just watching and yelling and just having fun. I mean, that is, a, that is one of the joys of my life, one of the extra activities that I like to do. That really, But it doesn't last but like two hours. And then the headache sits in because I'm too loud. And I'm tired, just yelling. And it just lasted for a moment. But oh, the happiness yeah, come that comes from the word of God saying, God, I am going to be in your way. I want it your way, Lord. I don't want it my way. I want it your way. It's going to take us five years to get through this song. <laughs> hey, we got a deep well. That springs up with happiness. The devil's depends on what happens. It, 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 happiness and happens is what the devil gives. You know, we, attend, we tend to equate, equate, uh, 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 equate pleasure and happiness together with prosperity. If I was only rich, I'd be happy. Think about it now. Don't lie. Don't look at me all super spiritual. Yes, that's what I used to think. And sometimes I still do. If I had some power, I'd show them. If I was popular with everybody and they liked me, man, it'd be better. If I had a position, if I was the boss, God don't equate happiness with any of those. So when we open up the Word of God in Psalm 119, it's interesting what he says. He says, happy Happy, blessed are the undefiled in the way. People that, it isn't perfect people in the way. It's people because of the way they become undefiled. 
Because of God's life, we become undefiled. That's the difference between the TV church and what we really have here through the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Bible believing that because it's real. It gives us spirit of God, moves in this place, and helps us. And next thing you know, we're different. We can't believe that we show up to church three days a week. We can't believe that we give our money to God. We can't believe that we go out and tell people. We can't believe that God counts us worthy to talk to us. And, and it's in the way. Nothing like being in the way. But we cannot have overflowing joy without holiness. Listen, God be holy. Well, God knows my heart and he doesn't care what I do. That's what the man that doesn't read a Bible or go to church says. That's what the man on CNN and Fox News say. I, I get so tired of listening to these people on Fox News tell me how Christian they are. Then the next thing you know, they're talking about drinking and, and, and running around and, and different things. But they're Christians, so they're Christians. Now, they're not in the way. Because, listen, my preacher didn't have to get up and tell me to stay away from that stuff. After a while, I started thinking, you know, I don't think I need to do that stuff. Because I got, got in the way. And God started speaking to me and, 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 and started helping me. The ultimate secret of happiness is to live according to God's word. Isn't that unbelievable? I mean, that is the ultimate secret to happiness. <laughs> to live according to God's word and what he wants. Happy man is happy because the word of God rules his way. He's happy because the word of God rules him. And so, he's a happy man because of his way. But look what the rest of the verse says. Who walk in the law of the Lord. You're not going to believe what the next one is. He's happy because of his way. He's happy because of his walk. I mean, Psalm, I've said it the other night, Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God, the person gets in the way, God tells us what to do. We don't sit in dark going, I wonder what I need to do. No, God tells us what to do. And it's not, his commandments are not grievous, the Bible says. You know, I, you know, I just got to do this. Uh, our kids, man, we, we, they see all this stuff going on with relatives and people and TVs and how great it is and how crazy it is. And, 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 and LeBron James, uh, you know, the other day, uh, the, the people in China and Hong Kong, are, 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 they're, they're, they're protesting for democracy. The, the most wicked place in the world is called China. They just massacre people. And because Nike is owned by LeBron by, by China, LeBron James got up and said, We shouldn't get we shouldn't say stuff about those protests over there. What an idiot. You see, our kids are looking at a man who graduated high school and they gave him millions of dollars to play basketball. And he's the role model of our kids. Who he is, he is, he is, he, is, he may try to sound articulate, but he is about as smart as a box. A box, just a, I mean, not even a nice box. Because why? Well, he says he's in the way. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know. He, he acts like he's in the way. But listen to me. When money rules you and his way doesn't, that's what happens with your walk. When you're not in the way, your walk's no good. He said they walk in the law of the Lord. Folks, that, that's what God has for us. And, and, man, I'm telling you, I pray all the time. And I, I, I love it. I pray for everybody in here. But I pray for my kids. Say, God, please, please don't let them think that it's better out there because we already know it's not. And there may come a time where they have to test it. I'm just praying to train up a child in the way it's going. She will not depart from that I trained. And, and, and give them the, they're going to have to be able to stand up by themselves. They've got to be able to make decisions at school and not, not me sit over them everything. And they don't need me to tell them how to talk to each other all the time. They've got to be able to, to direct their lives. But it's got to be in the way, and they've got to learn to walk in the law of the Lord. 
all of us, when we're born, we lay, you know, when my son was born, they said, put him on his stomach. And then I think when Millie was born, they said, leave her on her back. So they change all that stuff. Well, you know, he starts out on his stomach, then he, then he rolls over one time, and then, of course, he rolls off the bed, and, and that was Kara's fault. Uh, <laughs> then one time I was holding him, he dropped to the ground, and I grabbed him and held him up to God and started praying. And your first kid, you're like, you know, he fell down and hit his head. I'm like, God, Kara's like, Burton, settle down. I'm like, all right. Then the third one falls, and you're like, get up. Get up. We got 60,000 pictures of him and five of Amelia. We got a little more than five. Sorry, Amelia. And this is when you're born, you, you, you lay on your back, and then they, they roll over, and then eventually people are born to walk. You know, I was thinking about that today. I wonder if they look at us and go, he's walking. I'm going to try to walk. They just, they just, they just, I think it's in them. They got to get up. And then they start crawling. Then they stand up and fall down, stand up and fall down, and then eventually they stand up, they take a couple steps, and you take a video and pictures, and it's incredible. I mean, it's like joy. Ah! And, and they're walking, and they see, you know, they, they, they do well, and then they fall down sometimes, and different things, and, and as we get older, we still fall down every now and then, and literally fall down. I was walking with Kim Bible College, me and Kara were dating, and we were walking to the chapel service, which was down the street. And I'm walking with her, and all of a sudden she wasn't there. I looked over, and she's back there on the ground. I'm like, you, you all right? I thought, this one is kind of clumsy. Um, so we fall down. Hey, that's the way it is in the Lord, too. That's the way it is in the Lord, too, man. We, we, we get saved, and then somehow someone starts feeding us the bottle, the word, and we, we get a taste of it, and we're like, man, that's pretty good. I, I do like it. I mean, I remember when I figured out that the Bible was actually good on a bus coming from camp. I thought, this is incredible. I remember reading it, man, just so I'm thinking, this is an unbelievable book. Unbelievable. Unbe Folks, listen to me. No one had to tell me it was unbelievable. I thought, this is unbelievable. And then I remember doing better, and then I fall back down. I got to get back in the book. Doing better, fall back down. I got to get back in the book. We got to walk in the way of the Lord. We, we fall down, but we got to get back up. Fall down, but get back up. It makes you know we stop falling as much. I mean, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting blessed. We're happy walking in the Lord, and and, and, and it's our strength, and and it's not grievous, and we're not mad that we got to read it, and we're not mad when the preacher says, "Hey, some of you ain't reading your Bible," and the ones that ain't read it get mad at that. Get mad at it. Get happy that I told you every service that we've ever had in this church. And, 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 man, listen, we walk and we get up. We fall and we get up. We fall and we get up. We fall and we get up. God wants that. Happy, blessed is the, are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. We read it, we stumble, we fall, we get back up. Happy because of his way, happy because of his walk, because of the walk with the Lord. And number three, and I guess, we're, I guess we're done happy because of his will. Verse two and three, blessed, happy are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. They're happy because of his will, his testimony. They do what he wants to be done. That, that's what a happy person does. And so when I'm struggling, well, I can tell you why you're struggling. And it's in, I'm, not, I'm not Notre Dame that can just figure out the future. It's because because you're missing somewhere where you walk. And it's right here. You, you're not happy because you're not in his, uh, uh, his, uh, his way. You're not happy because you're not in his, walking with him. You're not happy because you're not in the will of God. Happy are they, blessed are they, that keep his testimonies. The idea behind testimonies carries the thought that God declares his will for us, and if we'll do his testimony, what he testifies that we should do, what he desires that we do, it guarantees that we'll be undefiled. They also do no iniquity. Think about that. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Man, God's will. 
and they seek him with a whole heart. Now, if we slowed down and read the Bible, it'd change our life. They, they seek him with a whole heart. You know, a lot of times I read my Bible and I'm like, half my heart's there and half my heart's thinking about somebody else. And I'm not always just thinking about people. Sometimes I'm thinking about cars and different things. And, 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 I'm, and I'm back over here and I come back and go, wait a minute, hold on, hold on what did I just read? Read eight verses. I don't know what I just read. But when I get my whole heart into it and I seek him, man, God, where are you? God, I need you. God, I can't make it without you. God, I want to find you in this book. God, I want you. I want to do everything that you want me to do. I, I want to be in your will. There's no other way, folks. There's no other way. And that's where we got to be. And that's where I want to be. And that's where I'm not often. It says, would they seek him with their whole heart? They also do no iniquity. That really got me this morning. I thought, you know, it protects me. Man, when I get in his way, it protects me. And I, and I, and I don't, uh, sin kept me from it, and now it keeps me from sin. Sin kept me from that Bible, and now that Bible keeps me from sin. They also do no iniquity. Well, that must mean they're perfect. No, there's no way to be perfect. Iniquity we realize, and I've talked about this, is, is, is the thoughts and the intents of the heart to do wrong, to want to do wrong, to how we think about sin. Sin and iniquity aren't the same words. Why did God give us two different ones? It, it's, uh, they also don't think like that, and it doesn't, it doesn't pleasure them to want to. That's because they're in the way. They're, they're walking in the Lord in the way, and they don't get pleasure from that stuff. They do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. I want to be a blessed man. I got one point. That's good. We'll we just go through it, what God wants us to do. Hey, listen. Tonight, the ultimate secret of a marvelous life is the word of God. You know, you ought to get up and read the Psalm 119 all week. Whatever, I, you know, read the book. Or get up and read it and think about what he's talking about in the 173 that he mentions the word of God. And how God is in every single verse of that scripture. It guarantees that we won't be defiled. It also keeps us captive to the Lord's will, the word of God. Man, when we think of it with our whole heart, Lord, speak to me. God, I'm going to read your book today. I want you to speak to me, please. Forgive me of any sin in my life. Lord, I'm sorry. And listen, sometimes forgive me of any sin in my life isn't the way it's got to be prayed. It's got to be prayed that you know stuff and you need to get right with God so he can forgive you. In general, forgive me, that's something I pray when I just don't know anything in my mind and can't remember anything, and I know that I've got to have sin that I haven't confessed. Lord, help me. And listen, I'll walk in your way, Lord. And that psalmist, I mean, you, get, you start reading this and, get, and getting into it and thinking about it. I mean, it's wonderful. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. I don't know who wrote it, but if it was Jeremiah, wow. The things that Jeremiah went through and he stuck with the Lord. Ezra, I mean, Ezra saw the hand of God move through three wicked kings to get him back to build that temple. Nehemiah, Lord, forgive us of our, forgive us of our past transgressions. He wasn't even in Jerusalem. He wasn't even old enough to be in Jerusalem when they were sinning against their father. The fathers were sinning against God. Daniel, man, we don't know how old Daniel was, but he might have been born there in the palace. And, and Daniel uh, was probably castrated, made a eunuch, and, and, and man, was stuck with God and prayed three times a day. I mean, Malachi, whoever it was that wrote it, David, and I'm just telling you, see, I've been through a lot. 
Oh, you've been through nothing compared to what these people have been through. And listen, look how close they did. God didn't allow this to get into the, to the inspired pages of this wonderful book because that person wasn't real that was writing it. Solomon had a lot of wisdom, but you read his stuff. He was a miserable man. A miserable man because of women and false gods. But he had wisdom. But this one here is like, man, I, I don't know if he's at the end of his life or at the beginning. But what a, what a great thing we can apply to our life tonight. The Word of God. Read the Word of God. Don't leave out the Word of God. Listen, you're like you are because of your walk with the Word of God. He said, well, you know how I am. No, it doesn't matter. You, you're doing great because you walk with the Word of God, or you're doing terrible because you don't walk with the Word of God. He said, I do okay. I, that's good. I'm glad you're accepting the mediocre life. I want to do okay. I, I want to do, I want, the, I want God. I mean, listen to me. I'm just like you. I wish I could get up here and tell you I was some, some spiritual guru that just, you know, our brother Randy Dignan gets up and says, I ain't, I've read my Bible every day since I was 11 years old. And I thought, that's incredible. Every day. And I got to analyze and I wonder if he just every now and then just got through it real quick because he had to. And I'm sure he did. I, I, I need to ask him. He's a good friend. You'd ask him, did you just read it sometimes? Or did you get something out of it every day? Hey, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. No other way to make it. If you're in here tonight and you don't know the Lord, listen to me, young people. If you've been in, most of you young kids have been in here so long, have seen lives change. And if testimonies and judgments and and doing right and all that. Listen to me now because I know we've got them in here at times. Not everybody. And some of us are doing well. And maybe all of us are doing pretty good. But listen, and this is for adults and everybody. If doing right bothers you, you're not in the way. You're not in the way. Now, it goes for my kids, too. I have long talks with all my kids about being hateful. Mine ain't perfect, man. They're hateful sometimes. And I say, listen, no. But then the next thing you know, daddy's being hateful. And we got to get in the way. Got to get in the way. Got to be in the way. Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for the word of God. Thank you for meeting with us tonight. Help us, Lord.